you gotta love that cooking. Not only do some foods taste better cooked, but there are many things, including those delicious roots, that we couldn't eat raw. Yes, there's a downside. You have to have a fire, and you really need to gather your food and keep it somewhere safe until you're ready to cook it. And that has caused some real problems, especially for the smaller and weaker among us. But the females are getting around that by cooking and offering their food and other favors to the males for protection. Something inside me wants to say that sounds sexist, but I have no idea what that means. There's a city called Sardis that is most remarkable. It has in it shops that are in the same location every day, where goods can be acquired without the need for trading. How can that be? Well, Sardis is a part of the kingdom of Lydia, and Lydia has been minting gold pieces called staters that have a fixed value attached to them and they can be used to purchase goods and services. Staters come in different sizes and are worth from one sheep or three jars of wine up to one month's salary for a soldier. And what separates this form of exchange from the ingots, coils, and rings used in Mesopotamia and Egypt is that these coins are marked and certified by the King of Lydia. It's a guarantee of value and it's helped nurture stability and growth. And as these coins have become more accepted, they become more readily available, which lends credence to the new adage that money makes money. There have been many signs this year of impending doom. Signs which had miserably frightened the people. It began with whirlwinds and thunderstorms, immense flashes of lightning, and dragons seen flying between the clouds. These were followed by the famine, but this too was merely an omen of what was to come. On this day, on the Isle of Lindisfarne, the monastery was attacked by savage warriors who came from the sea. No lives were spared, and all the holy treasures were taken. This news is doubly frightening to the population. The shores are not safe, and neither are the holy places. What assurance is there for Britain if St. Cuthbert, with so great a number of saints, defends not its own? Only one thing seems sure. The pagan raiders will return. The power struggles in Italy today are at best unstable and unpredictable. The peninsula, after all, has five great powers. Florence, Venice, Milan, Rome, and Naples, as well as a half dozen smaller players, all involved in plots and intrigues against each other. But as we were reminded last week, these power struggles can also come from within. Florence's ruling brothers, Lorenzo and Giuliano de' Medici, were caught off guard at Easter Sunday Mass at the Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore. As the church bell sounded, they were brutally attacked by assassins sent by their banking rivals, the Pazzi family. Unfortunately for the Pazzis, Lorenzo survived, and the populace has rallied behind him, hunting down the conspirators, which include a number of priests. Already, corpses are dangling outside the law courts, the Pazzi name has been banned by decree, and judges are in the process of passing a hundred or so more death sentences. And Lorenzo, while he is recuperating, is seeking to commission a fresco that will depict the executions. Planned to cover the facade of the Bargello prison, Lorenzo is said to be considering either Leonardo da Vinci or Botticelli. Since the discovery of the Rosetta Stone in 1799, the French have been at the forefront in the exploration of ancient Egypt, having for all intents and purposes invented Egyptology. But one must not forget that these scientific endeavors were born on the tides of war. It was with Napoleon's invasion of Egypt that over 500 civilian specialists in biology, mineralogy, linguistics, mathematics, chemistry, architecture, and history came to this land. Their mission was to study Egypt's past, and the fruits of those labors are still being revealed today. Yes, it's true that the Rosetta Stone is being deciphered by the English. And that irony has not been missed by Napoleon, who keeps abreast of the world from the island of St. Helena, where he remains in exile. About the Egyptian campaign, he says, the East was where all great men of the world have acquired their celebrity, and he has no regrets on his attempt to follow in their footsteps. As for his brief stay in Egypt, he confirms that yes, he did spend time alone in the king's chamber of the Great Pyramid. But when asked about what happened there, he reportedly would only say, you'd never believe me. 
And believe it or not, that wraps up today's look at history's headlines. <laughs>